Anita. Good morning. <clears throat> Good to see you guys this morning. So we're going to talk about the categories of material facts. Alan, thank you for joining. Alan's going to share in, in a little bit about a, a real life example that he dealt with recently. I am also going to be sharing some examples of real things that took place in the last year or two with some of our agents. I'll going to disclose up front the pictures of the houses that we're talking about are different to protect the identity of, of agents who may or may not have gotten themselves into a little bit of hot water. But that being said, categories of material facts. Now, you guys who are fresh out of licensing or maybe even in pre-licensing who are watching the recording later, this should hit home for you. A lot of times having some real life examples will make it a little bit easier um, to remember. So I'm gonna start off by telling a story or asking a question. First, let me set the stage. So this house built in 1980, it was on a large rural lot. It was owned by the original owner. So it, it hadn't been sold recently. It hadn't been on the MLS three years ago or anything like that. Really, there, there's no way to know what's going on inside of this house unless you are there and you get, you get to actually see it. Now, the house was listed as coming soon. And during coming soon, as you guys know, there are no showings. That's an MLS rule. That, that's not a real estate commission rule. So just so you know, that's, a, that's an MLS rule. There were no interior photos of this listing. So this house was listed. The residential property disclosure had been uploaded into the MLS. So buyer's agents could look at that. But it was also, again, on a large rural lot. So it's not as if you could drive around the block and see the house three or four sides of it. And so, as you know, in this hot, hot market, people are buyers are being very aggressive and they're making sight unseen offers. It happens quite a bit. It's one thing when you see a house that's two years old and you know the neighborhood and you're able to drive through and see that there's not huge holes in the roof and things like that, right? That's, that's a little bit different. But as you guys know, in this crazy market in North Carolina, we have what's called due diligence and due diligence fees are in fact non-refundable and so if you are making an offer on a sight unseen house that you really don't know anything about other than reading the wonderful description by the listing agent, it's pretty risky to put forth a large due diligence fee because again, it's not refundable. So buyers in 2021, 2022, it's not uncommon at all to see $10,000, $20,000, $30,000 in due diligence. It's non-refundable. I listed a house two weeks ago, $550. The, it went for well above asking with multiple offers and a $20,000 due diligence payment. And then what happens when the buyer comes and asks for repairs? The seller, most of the time these days is saying, I'm not interested. Thank you for asking, but I'm not interested. I am not going to make any repairs and I'm going to keep your $20,000 if you terminate. And then buyers are left with a decision to make. So that has, that is something that has taken place a lot. Now we'll come back to that at the end, but our learning and objectives for today are to be able to distinguish material facts from other information, explain the different categories of material facts and differentiate between the different four different categories of material facts. So the first thing we need to do is define what a material fact is. It's not complicated. It's information about the property or even the transaction that affects the sale of the property. So Anything that might change a buyer's decision to buy or a seller's decision to sell is going to be classified as a material fact. So the first category are facts about the property itself. Is it in a floodplain? Is it sinking? Is there a foundation problem? Are there holes in the roof? 
These are things that buyers are going to want to know. Significant defects, malfunctioning systems, does the HVAC work? Is there a leaking roof? What is the size of the property? Now, and feel free to, to interject if, if anybody has any questions or comments along the way. And Alan, we're gonna to get to you in, in a moment. And I appreciate you being on here today. The second category of material facts are facts that are directly relating to the property itself. So is it in a homeowners association? Um, what is the zoning, right? These are, these are things that affect the property. They're related to the property, but they're not part of the physical structure. Are there plans to widen the road? Now, we can have other conversations about is it a listing agent's responsibility to disclose that the highway is going to be widened and the front yard is going to lose 20 feet? Is it your responsibility to know that and to disclose that? And the Real Estate Commission is going to say, should you have known, did you do your due diligence? But ultimately, it's going to be up to the buyer's agent as well. And if at any point, now this is something that's very important for, you, for all of us, you guys can always ask me, right? I'm always willing to, to dig in and, and talk through these things, but it's also very important for you to know that you have the real estate commission as a resource. Now, if you are in pre-licensing right now, I'm sorry, the real estate commission is not going to answer your email, but if you are licensed in the state of North Carolina, you can call or email the real estate commission and they will get back to you within a day, typically, and they are going to give you an answer. They're going to want your license number to verify that you are a licensee because they do work for and with licensees primarily. So um, if, if you are listing a property and you see as you're driving to the property to put a sign in the yard, you see that the woods that are behind the house are now being cleared and it looks like a new development is going in. Clearly that's something that you should probably disclose. Okay. If the lot behind the house or the, the wooded lot behind the house was just sold and you didn't know that it was not listed on the MLS and there was no way for you to be fully aware of that, it's probably not something that you need to disclose. Okay. Third category are facts that are pertaining to the buyer or the seller's ability to complete the transaction. So if you have a buyer, and this happened to me one time, buyer was a cash buyer. I had done three, two transactions. This was my third or maybe fourth transaction with them. We we're under contract to purchase a home that they were paying cash for the house. And they called me two weeks before closing and said, David, we have a problem. I said, sure, what's going on? Well, we don't have the money. What, what, what do you mean? They were expecting more money to come in. They went out and bought a brand new Mustang. Um, the other money that they were expecting was delayed. And so now we have a material fact. And we ended up, they ended up having to get a mortgage, but that was a material fact. And I had to let the listing agent know, hey, the terms have changed. The terms have changed. And, um, and of course, that was something that we had to work through as a buyer and seller agents. If, for instance, the seller is unable to convey clear title, that is a material fact. We had a deal close in December, where December 2021, where the seller had installed solar panels on a house and not paid them off. It turns out there was a lien on the property for $50,000 and that had to be dealt with before we could successfully close the title, close the, close the transaction. So any, anything like that, that affects the buyer's or the seller's ability to complete the transaction as it is stated on the offer to purchase and contract on the sales agreement, is going to be considered a material fact. The fourth category is who remembers Faith Hill? 
it matters it matters to to faith it matters to me facts that are of special importance to a party of the transaction okay now i forgot to leave you with the cliffhanger of the house that was listed that was built in 1980 that the buyers and sellers went under contract with a twenty thousand dollar due diligence payment on a house that they had not seen interior photos on and when the buyers after they go under contract the buyers walk in with their with their buyer's agent into the house and the house smells like cigarette smoke the buyer is livid and says no one told me this house smelled like cigarette smoke. I have allergies. There's no way I could ever live in this house. I want my money back. I want my due diligence back. So what happens in that, in that scenario? Does anybody know? Is, is cigarette smoke, is the smell of cigarette smoke a material fact? Yes or no? Anybody? Drop it in the chat. Everybody's afraid. I, I'm the same way. I like Everybody's afraid of being wrong, so they don't want to say. I get it. The the true the answer is it depends. Oh, we got some chat. Okay, no, and I don't know. So Rita says no. Alan says I don't know. I, I appreciate your honesty, Alan. I wouldn't have known this either, and this is something that I had to look up. Okay, it turns out cigarette the smell of cigarette smoke is a material fact if it was disclosed by the buyer that they had allergies, they don't want to live in a house that smells like cigarette smoke. And ultimately, the resolution of this story was the buyer's agent, and fortunately she was not with Call It Closed, the buyer's agent knew that that was something that was important to the buyers. And she did not ask before preparing and writing this offer to the listing agent. Now, why is cigarette smoke something that that could matter it could be a material fact but it's not necessarily because if the sellers smoked in the house and the new buyers smoke in the house and they don't care that it smells like cigarette smoke it's not a material fact it doesn't matter to them but if you have allergies if you don't smoke chances are it's going to matter to you and that's something that's one of those gray areas and if you're not sure then by all means ask and find out before you go and list a property before you go and write an offer these are things that we need to be aware of now some more examples of things that are, are of special importance to a property um, if a buyer tells you i only want to live in a neighborhood that has a community pool well you can't just start searching for subdivisions or search searching for homes that are in an HOA because not every HOA has a pool right sometimes they might say i don't want an HOA um, i want i want a house i was talking with a buyer yesterday i want a house on 2 to 5 acres okay well i start looking and there's lots of of homes out there on 2 to 5 acres that are actually inside of an HOA so i had to make sure that i filter my search even more to to take out the homeowners associations. So if they want to be outside the city limits, if they want well water, or if they don't want well water, these are all example, examples of homes that, um, of facts that are known to be of special importance to a party in the transaction. So um, that definitely could apply to pets as well. Thank you for, the, for that, that question. So if somebody is allergic to animals, um, I've certainly dealt with buyers who said, I want a brand new house because I, I have allergies and, you know, I don't want a house that had somebody else's pets in it. Um, and you can potentially find a, a house that's existing that somebody else previously lived, lived in that's not, um, it didn't have dogs in it. So anything like that, you can, you can ask the listing agent, hey, can you find out, did the people have dogs, did the people have cats? things like that. And um, the, the listing agent is not obligated to provide you the answer, but chances are they're going to do their best to get you an honest answer. But you also have to um, disclose to the buyer, hey, the listing agent said, right? So I listed a house, I made a mistake one time on a house that I had listed in, in Harrisburg, North Carolina. The 
house. It was a one and a half story. It had a bonus room upstairs. And the seller told me that it was, they, they bought it new. They had it built. The seller told me that there was plumbing for a bathroom in the upstairs next to the bonus room. There was a huge utility closet that could be converted to a bathroom. He said, the plumbing's there. I put in the MLS, the house is, has rough plumbing in the attic for the for a bathroom to be added. I should have said the seller says there is plumbing. And I ended up, fortunately it was not $20,000, but I ended up having to refund a buyer's due diligence out of my own pocket because I made a mistake. And sometimes, unfortunately, we learn the hard way. And I don't want you guys to have to do as I did. So this house, we kind of went, went out of order, but who was at fault? Who would you say, drop it in the chat. Who was at fault with this house that smelled like cigarette smoke? I think I already said the answer. So if you're paying attention, you'll know. Was it the buyer's agent's fault or the listing agent's fault that nobody, that the buyer ended up losing $20,000 in due diligence? Right. It was the buyer's agent. It was, well, it was the buyer's agent if they knew, right? And, and we believe that they did know, um, but we were not a party to that. So it's important that we know what we're talking about. It's important that we protect the needs of our buyers and go on. So I'm going to stop sharing for a moment and give it to Alan for a minute because Alan has an interesting story of another example that he dealt with recently. Alan, can you unmute? Yep. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, recent transaction, uh, land, uh, a land sale. Um, we, we make the offer, we get under contract, and uh, it, it, it wasn't until closing that we found out that there was a deed restriction on the, on the lot. It got resolved, however, it got a little, little nerve wracking for, for me. I emailed you, David, uh, to find out Wait a second. <laughs> Who's at fault? I, I personally, I felt like I was uh, at fault. I, I think I mentioned. I think I'm at fault because I didn't research enough to find out that there was the deed restriction and what what the deed restriction was. Listing agent didn't disclose anything, and um, Sellers obviously knew about it, but they didn't. They didn't tell the listing agent, but it did get resolved. It finally recorded yesterday. <laughs> good, 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 good job, Alan. What what was the deed rest restriction? Because it's kind of an obscure thing that some people, a lot of people, wouldn't need to check. When uh, when these owners first uh, had this land, and this is back in the uh, late eighties, early nineties they were gonna have a development. So the uh, deed restrictions was basically use of land. Um, they wanted it for development, but the development fell apart. Company, company that was involved, their company was dissolved and they never took the deed restrictions off right. of that lot. It was, a, it, it was uh, 25 acres, so. There was some money involved in the <laughs> in, in the transaction before it even closed. The survey was sixty four hundred. So I mean, really, if if you're buying twenty five acres out in the county outside of city limits, you would think logically that you could probably use that land for anything that you wanted, for livestock to start a farm to do something like that. But it took. It took the attorney, the closing attorney, to, to discover that this was, that there was a restriction on having livestock, right, essentially, 
because somebody in right, the past right, and that's what the uh, the buyer wanted it for livestock. He he has has a farm right, in, basically adjacent to the land he bought because he's expanding. So there was going to be livestock on on this property, and. Um, not trying to make any excuses, but we never heard from the attorney. So, I, you know, we're every, everyone's thinking everything's fine. Day of closing, he brings up the deed restrictions. And that's when it got nerve wracking. <laughs> that's well, that's that's what happens. That's what happens. I was going to say welcome to real estate, but this is not your first. <laughs> But that's 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 what happens, and that's why we want to do the research up front, you know. So, the life lesson is: if you're working with a buyer and they want to buy something, if they want you to represent them, okay, why do you want to use it? And let's make sure, what do you want to use that land for, and what are you going to do? Because if they had wanted to do to to build a single family home HOA community, they could have done that, you know. Um, right. it's very interesting. So I appreciate you sharing, Alan. Thank you. You're welcome. Any, any comments or questions for Alan or any other personal stories about material facts that maybe you learned the hard way or found interesting? So again, material facts, something about the property relating to the property affecting the sale of the property, right? A party, the buyer, the seller, or something that's known to matter to the buyer or the seller. I need it for livestock. I can't, sm I don't wanna be around cigarette smoke or pet smells or anything like that. Who can name the four, <laughs> who is taking notes? Who can name the four categories of material facts? Put it in the chat or unmute. I'll give you a hint, it was on that last slide. Facts about the property, facts directly relating to the property, such as HOA zoning, facts directly affecting the principal's ability to complete the transaction. What if you had listed a property and it's on the actively on the market and the sellers trips over a, a rock in the backyard that turns out to be solid gold. Is that a material fact? Might they decide to increase the purchase price of their home or decide to take it off the market? It turns out there's a, there's a gold mine in their backyard that they didn't know about. Yeah, probably that's gonna be a material fact. Facts known to be of a special importance to a party. Any questions or comments? This is always the most fun part, guys. Any other examples? You can, um, if you have an example and you don't want to tell on yourself, you could just say it was uh, Melissa or Jimmy. All right, I'm going to stop the recording. Thank you guys all. And then.